Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on our episode for this week is Dr. Mateo Smalik. Dr. Malik is a veterinarian and a PhD student at Ghent University in Belgium. Dr. Mateos, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. Why don't you start by giving the audience a little bit of background about yourself? Hello, Dr. Johnson. Uh, thank you very much for this nice introduction and thank you for the invitation to, the po- to this podcast. Um, as you mentioned, yes, I am a veter- veterinarian um, where I, um, I started my studies in Poland. I do also come from there. I'm Polish. Um, however, I started a different studies. I obtained a bachelor degree in biotechnology. However, after that, I decided to uh, start a, a veterinary school. Um, so after four years in Poland, I went for my clinical years to Germany, to Hanover, where, where I also uh, completed, uh, yeah, finished the studies. Um, on the way during my studies and after, I really like to uh, go with the veterinarians in the field to the swine farms. And I also made a decision that I want to become a specialist in swine health or swine health uh, management. So after my studies, I made again a a decision to uh, start the residency to become the specialist of the European College uh, of Porcelain Health Management. And since year 2019, um, till now, I am in Belgium at the University of Ghent. And this month, I, I am actually finishing my uh, my residency. And I also hope to obtain the PhD degree next year. Dr. Mateos, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about ear biting. Uh, it's a topic that is uh, uh, a, uh, a painful one for pig producers. Um, nobody likes to see uh, pigs that are that are suffering from ear necrosis. Um, but why don't you talk to us a little bit about how you got interested in that? You've done some work on this in your, in your research. What, is this something that you saw in the field as a veterinarian or is this something that, uh, you know, veterinarians brought to you and said, hey, if you're going to go to the university and study something, here's an area that we need solutions for. How did you get interested in this as a topic? So you started, you, you started quite good because you, you said ear biting and then you also mentioned ear necrosis. So. Uh, these are two, let's say, topics, and people have problem with that, and we are not really sure um, what is first, or yeah, as you mentioned, or as we already mentioned, what what is first, the chicken or the egg. However, the, the topic of ear necrosis, why I started this research on that was actually uh, by accident. It was actually a possibility to start a project on that. We had a farm um, with 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 that project and. Yeah, the history um, of um, yeah, ear necrosis it has been not solved for many years. I think the first uh, the, the first uh, publication was from eighties, and till now we don't really see any clear or any good um, results, or we have no answer to, uh, to to the question about the uh, about the triggering factor or about yeah uh, the causes of that. So. Um, yes, I, I decided to, to, to join and to, uh, to perform this, uh, uh, this project. Um, the first study, which is already published and investigated the, the effect um, of ear necrosis on the performance of the pigs. So to check whether they grow better or not. And also we tried to uh, check the possible influence of, of mycotoxins because very often in the, in the, in the field, the farmers or also the, the veterinarians blame the mycotoxins as a possible uh, uh, triggering factor or reason of that. Um, the results actually show that um, uh, indeed there is no big influence on the performance with mild lesions on the ears. Also, we could not really show the influence of mycotoxins on it. So that was the, the, the first study. And after that, I got a bit... Um, upset that we could not really find any any proper results. So th- after that, with my professor uh, Professor Mas, um, we designed a study to investigate a bit more this this uh, that project. So in that in in the second project, um, 
yes, we investigated the micro, microbiota present on the, on the affected ears, also in the healthy animals. And yes, we performed those studies on several farms and on always on, on one winning batch, because you can also very often see in the papers that the effect of the batch is uh, very strong. So from winning back, win, winning batch to winning batch, you can really uh, see differences. Therefore, it's always good to uh, focus on, on, on one group. Very good. What about um, treatment of affected groups? Have you had any ability to do any research on um, specific treatments or do you get any feedback from veterinarians on the field on things that they routinely try? I would say that we, that we probably have no right, no, no proper treatment for that. In the field, some of the veterinarians claim that long antibi uh, antibiotic treatment may help. Um, but there are also um, studies that show that it really doesn't help. So the treatment in that uh, case, uh, for sure, we cannot um, um, do it with my, um, antibiotics. However, when I go to the farms and uh, farmers ask me about, uh, about the possibility how to deal with that, um, I always say, um, please take a look on the pigs and take out the pigs which bite the other pigs. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned studying mycotoxins, uh, Mateos. Um, do you know which specific mycotoxins? I know there are many different ones. Were there specific mycotoxins that were evaluated? Um, we performed the studies, uh, the, the study on several mycotoxins. Let's say the most common aflatoxins, Zaralenon, Don, um, and yatins, which are also very common, and we actually could not find any link. So we, we investigated the mycotoxins in the field, but also in the plasma of the pigs without any good correlation. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. How about uh, prevention? What, what other thoughts do you have about next steps to evaluate preventing this problem? Actually, with my latest study, on which I have evaluated the behavior of the animals, I think I obtained very interesting results in terms of um, ear, maybe not ear biting itself, but ear chewing or it's ear suckling. So prolonged chronic process, which might lead uh, later to uh, clinical signs of lesions on the ear tips. So in general, my point of view on that is that we should put that problem in the same problem as tail biting. So um, I would recommend to improve the uh, environment of the, of the animals maybe to limit the density of the animals, so to improve the welfare and also improve the enrichment. So to keep the animals busy with the environment, not with themselves. Very good. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show and sharing with us your knowledge on this. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the show and to our audience. Thank you very much for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Mateos Malik, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com. The journey of a hero has challenges, battles, and villains. But after the fight is won, new paths are open, and it's time to catch our breath 
and move forward. More powerful and super than ever. And you, hero of the swine industry, do you have your cape ready to take new flights? Swine Talks 2023, December 6th and 7th. Together, we're more super than any obstacle.